Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another Faction Frigate Guide for Eve Echoes. Today we're going to be going back and taking a second look at the Gurustus Pirate's Worm, one of my personal favourite of the Faction Frigates, and one that I know a lot of you folks keep asking about as well, and there's a lot of really interesting things to discuss on this one, so do be prepared for quite a deep dive. Now, if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting a like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell so that you never miss an upload, and of course, let me know in the comments section down below what topics or ships you want to see me cover in future videos. Finally, as well, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining us on Patreon. Details are on screen now at the bottom of the screen in that shiny new text box. All that said and done then, let's talk about the Gurustus Pirate's Worm. The Gurustus Pirates are one of the five pirate factions currently available in Eve Echoes, alongside the Blood Raider Covenant, Sanchez Nation, Angel Cartel, and the Serpentis Corporation. These guys are based mainly out of Venal, but you will find them throughout Kaldari Nullsec. Look in Kaldari space and you'll see that the combat anomalies there are Gurustus Pirate Anomalies, and so you can go through those and start hunting for the different dead spaces. Now, the Kaldari, of course, are renowned for using missiles and shield tanks, and the same goes for the Gurustus Pirates, but they also have a heavy reliance on drones. Drones with a touch of missiles and shield tanking. Now, of course, there are three ships. We've got the Rattlesnake at the far right, the Healer in the middle, and, of course, the Worm is the faction frigate that we're going to be looking at now. So let's jump in and take a look at this one. Now, looking at its appearance as well, the first thing that should be obvious is that the Worm looks very much like the Merlin. The Merlin, of course, being the Kaldari Tech 2 frigate, and, of course, the Merlin Assault being the Tech 7 variant. That is not an accident. That is not lazy design. That is part of the backstory of the Gurustus Pirates, in that their leader, the Rabbit, is kind of... There's, there's this whole who's in charge thing between the Gurustus Pirates and the Kaldari Navy. Someone is stealing blueprints from someone else, and we're not quite sure which one one's witch, and it actually is possibly insinuated that it is the rabbit that's designing the ships, and it's the Kaldari navy that is either stealing them or buying them legitimately from them, and it's a very interesting story. Anyway, let's have a look at the actual ship itself. So if we look here at the worm, it's got two drone tubes that can launch only small drones, two high slots, three mid slots, three low slots, and then three power grid and mechanical rigs. An important point here as well is the power grid of this ship itself. 64 megawatts is incredibly large for a frigate and is a key part of how we build this ship later on. Defensively speaking, it's fairly solidly tanky as well. 1,352 on shield, 969 on armor, 1,014 on structure with a defense of 3,949 in total. Again, definitely a shield tank, um, but that's something we'll cover more later on. Looking at the rest of its stats, it again has a very small signature radius, 29.4 meters, and a very speedy flight velocity of 354.0 meters per second. That's its standard speed, obviously before and after burner or micro warp drive is used. Now that signature radius and the flight velocity does make for a very fast moving and hard to hit frigate, which allows you to speed tank with this fairly effectively. Yes, it's not as fast as some of the other faction frigates, it's the slowest of the lot, but it does have advantages in the is that little bit tankier and brawly as you'll see in a moment. The scan resolution as well, 722 meters, is absolutely huge. This thing is no slouch when it comes to locking onto targets. It does it ridiculously quickly. Um, not quite fast enough to really make it a reliable gate camp locker, but it can service against the slower moving ships and great for solo hunting because it means you can quickly pick your targets, lock onto what you want to, hammer them and then get out of there if you need to. Looking then at the trait descriptions, being a Gurstus Pirates ship, it has a roll bonus of 175% increased small drone damage. That means those drones are doing a massive increase of damage based on what they were previously, and they get an additional 200% small drone EHP. That means three times the amount of hit points that they would normally have. It's huge. Absolutely huge hit points there, makes them very survivable, and basically makes those drones almost act as if they're, like, basically six drones. The advanced small drone operation bonus that you see here as well, plus 10% small drone damage and one kilometer drone control range. 
Meaning if you've got drone trained all the way up to five and you've got advanced small drone operation up to five, you should have a 30 kilometer drone range as standard and a 50% uh, increase to small drone damage there, which adds the additional two hundred, takes that up to 225% small drone damage in total, which as I said, makes this better than having six drones, which is just absolutely mad for a ship that's only launching two. Advanced Frigate Command then gives you bonuses to Missile Torpedo Kinetic Damage, Missile Torpedo Thermal Damage, and increases your Shield Resistances. That Shield Resistance is a huge part here. Having Advanced Frigate Command at 5 gives you 20% extra Shield Resistance across the board, making this a very solid ship. The Shields don't take nearly as much damage as you'd expect them to. An important point to note there, those Missile Torpedo Kinetic and Thermal Damage bonuses are not relegated to any particular size of Missile or Torpedo. It's not small Missile Torpedo, it's not large Missile Torpedo, it is just Missile Torpedo Kinetic Damage. And some of you may have already figured out where we're going here, but let's have a look at how to fit this thing, and that is a key point to remember. Some of you folks have suggested that it might be useful for me to showcase what level my skills are at, relevant to this particular ship at least, in order to showcase what bonuses the ship is getting from my personal skill training. So let's do exactly that, starting with cruising technology. Now Frigate Command is obviously a vital skill for this kind of thing, and you can see I've got it trained all the way up to Expert Frigate Command, currently Expert Frigate Command 4. With Afterburner and Micro Warp Drove Operation, those are both at 5-4, Micro Warp Drove Operation is only at 4-4, then Shield, Armor and Defense aren't overly relevant to this particular build. Frigate Engineering, however, is absolutely vital, and you can see currently I've got it trained all the way, Frigate Engineering 5, Advanced Frigate Engineering 5, and Expert Frigate Engineering 2 training into three and four as we speak. Now this is mainly because we want to have all of that juicy juicy power grid um, that we get from having these fitted and you'll see why that is in just a moment. Regarding the relevant weapon systems, starting with drone, I have small drone operation at five, advanced small drone operation at five, and then small drone upgrade and advanced small drone upgrade both at four. The drone skill here, if we scroll down to this, I've only got trained up to level four, isn't actually overly important for the worm. Once you've started off with the worm, you have enough drone control skill basically early on to be able to use two drones. All you're getting from drone here at this point is the extra drone control range. And I don't really care all that much whether it's 29 kilometers or whether it's 30 kilometers. Ultimately, I'm going to be outranging my missiles anyway, so you know it, it's kind of neither here nor there. It's nice to have that extra distance, but it's not overly vital. Now in regards to missiles, I have small missile torpedo operation at 4 and 4, small missile torpedo upgrade at 4 and 3, and small uh, medium missile torpedo operation at 4, and medium to missile torpedo upgrade at 3. Those are actually relevant, and I will explain why in just a second. So why on earth would medium missile skills be important, and why did I go to so much pains earlier to point out that the Advanced Frigate Command bonus on the worm does not specify the missile size? Well, that's because in this build, we're using Kaldari Navy Medium Rapid Missile Launchers on a frigate. Yes, really, and that's kind of what this build works on. One of the problems with the worm right now is that currently no one is higher than tech level 7 in the game, which means we cannot use drones higher than Mark 7 drones. There are no storyline drones, no faction drones, no officer drones, and no dead space drones, which means the worm is stuck using Mark 7 equipment for its highest damage option. The second point there is that if we go with the missile launches here, we can use small missile launches, we can use small torpedoes, but why on earth would we not use medium rapid missile launches if we can cram them in, which we just about can, though it does require quite a lot of jury rigging, as you'll see. Ultimately, this build is very intensive. It is power grid intensive through the max. These things, 36 megawatts apiece. That's a lot of power grid used up there, but it does afford an absolutely massive whack of DPS. 57.07, look at the damage there across the board. You can see as well, 71.22 on both electromagnetic and explosive with 107 on thermal and kinetic, thanks to the bonuses that the ship is getting from my skills. These also currently, thanks to my personal skills, have a missile range of 19.5 kilometers. Obviously training medium missile upgrade will increase the range of these as well. And that is a skill you really should look into training. One I would like to train into more as well. 
It's also why I point out that the drone skill isn't overly important to the worm, because it doesn't matter that I can get a theoretical drone control range of 30 kilometers, my missiles can only currently shoot at 19, so those last 11 kilometers are kind of wasted, and I don't really want to spend a load of skill points focusing heavily on that. So get that missile, uh, medium missile upgrade up there as well, and you'll be able to have extra range using the worm. Not that it necessarily needs it, as you'll see later on. Now for the rest of the fit here, in order to get that power grid, we have had to sacrifice all of the mechanical rigs for three ancillary power grid router twos. 10% additional power grid across the board from each of these. That is how we are cramming out that full here. What is it? 110 power grid. You For a frigate, that is humongous, and it is astonishing that we can fit those on there, but we still need to be able to have other things on there too. Obviously, you can stop early on with the uh, just the rapid missile launchers fitted and not really worry too much about anything else, but then you've kind of got a hard-hitting worm that doesn't really do anything. So, for the low slots, I've gone for a bit of an unusual mix here. First of all, on one side you'll see a Smuggler Small Afterburner, and on the other you'll then see a Scout Small Micro Warp Drive. Why on earth would I have both of these fitted if, you know, ultimately I'm trying to save on Power Grid? Obviously propulsion is quite hefty on Power Grid, and I can only have one of these active at any one time anyway. Well, ultimately it's because I'm building for both PvE and PvP. I do most of my PvE ratting in Nullsec, and thus there is the opportunity that someone is going to jump into my anomaly at any point in time, and I need to be either able to engage or disengage at a moment's notice. I can't just pretend that oh, I'm only here for ratting and get upset if someone turns up for PvP and I'm not fit for it. Now the reason I have both of these then is simply because I cannot put anything like the warp, uh, the warp core optimizers here in the lows into the rigs, so I have no warp core stability, meaning I'm easily disrupted. That means if I'm just using the afterburner for speed tanking and someone disrupts me and things start to go a bit wrong, I'm stuck there, and if they're faster than me, I'm not going to be able to escape. At which point then I can deactivate the afterburner, double tap into the distance, pick a direction, and micro warp drive as fast as I can away from there, get myself to a safe distance out of warp disruption range, and then actually warp to a safe place from there, and try and recover, recoup, and maybe go into hiding for a bit if it has gone that wrong. The mid slot here then is a Gisty C-type small shield booster. If you wanted to swap out the um, swap out the medium rapid missile launches for just small missile launches, you can do. You will lose some DPS. You can then cram in a medium shield booster here for a little bit of extra survivability. Not that I personally think you need it, but it is an option there that I should just mention. I go for the Gisty C-type small shield booster. That's more than enough capability for me to repair any damage that my shields happen to take whilst I am speed tanking. Obviously then for the mid slots, the first one we go for is an interruptive warp disruptor, simply because, well, yeah, if, I've, if I'm going to be accounting for PvP, I need a way to lock them down. This may end up being a warp scrambler, but I doubt it. I'm probably just going to go for two interruptive warp disruptors. When scramblers are added, I just don't have a second one handy at the moment because uh, they're expensive, and having to have every single one of my faction frigates with at least one warp disruptor on it really starts to add up. So putting two onto one ship, I would love to do. I just didn't have one around. That's what the empty uh, mid slot here would be. Let's pretend that that's got an another interruptive warp disruptor, giving me four points of warp jammer strength. The mid one I've gone for here is an interruptive stasis weather fire. This is actually more important than you might think. It's part of that safety net that I mentioned earlier, that if something does decide that it's going to warp disrupt me and give me a bit of a hard day, I can activate that stasis weather fire, keep them at 13 kilometers away whilst I activate the micro warp drive and get the hell out of there. That's going to be very important when scramblers become a thing because scramblers will turn off micro warp drives, meaning I need the 13 kilometer range here of the uh, stasis weather fire to kind of slow them down and push them away whilst my afterburner gets me to 13 Ks. Hopefully then that's out of their scrambler range. I can activate the micro warp drive, push the extra distance and run from there. Now for drones, ultimately if I go into the drone menu here, you will see that I have two or three of every single drone type in here. I tend to go with hobgoblins as standard, um, just for the starter fitting, because the thermal damage is both decent against shields and not terrible against armor either, whereas obviously if I go with acolytes in that slot, I'm going to mess through their shields, but I'm going to really struggle if it's something like an armor tank. Um, it just gives me a bit of a straight up option there, I can always disengage and change those on the fly as needed. 
Now looking then at the power grid rigs, here I've gone for a drone firepower augmenter, 15% damage bonus, alongside a drone speed augmenter. This is a bit of a weirdly named thing. A lot of people think it just makes your drones move faster. It doesn't. It's their activation time. It's how fast they shoot. So it's kind of like a burst aerator. Hence, I've gone for two of these. Two drone speed augmenters and one drone firepower augmenter. Obviously, that is the one solid damage and two faster firing rigs that we uh, the kind of combination that we normally use. And as far as I can tell from the numbers we've run and from trying it out on the actual ships itself, thanks to prototype rigs, this seems to be the better way of doing higher DPS. And you can see for a frigate here that is using Mark 7s for its main weapons here and using only uh, faction, faction level gear in its high slots, 308.94 DPS. If you've watched my other faction frigate videos, they tend to cap out at around the 320 DPS margin when they are fully fitted with close range dead space. So things like uh, the dead space pulse lasers or dead space auto cannons, those tend to be only about 320, 330. So with this, uh, you're getting Mark 7 drones, not even faction level drones, is already comparative on the DPS. It's an absolute beast. And it can do that, as I said, from nearly 20 kilometers away, obviously by training up your medium missile, uh, op medium missile operation upgrade, sorry, you can get the additional range there as well. Very fast moving, standard speed here, 502.68 meters per second. If you look at the targeting, you can see it's got a tiny signature radius of 29. It's an excellent speed tank, high DPS, but also with ridiculously good shielding as well, meaning it doesn't take that much damage. Again, though, if you did want to just uh, go a little bit safer, you can can lose that second drone speed augmenter for something like an anti-electromagnetic rig to uh, a shield rig to pump uh, to plug that hole and just give you a little bit of extra electromagnetic resistance on the shield. To showcase this in PvE, I'm jumping into a tier 9 angel small anomaly at about 30 kilometers range. Yes, a tier 9 small anomaly to showcase that the worm can take this on. So we arrive, we're going to lock onto everything, 30 kilometers is far enough away to pick our targets, close enough to get stuck right in. In this case, that Gisty Thrasher Interdictor is going to be my first target, so we set the orbit, we activate the afterburner, and put on every single weapon system we have to get rid of that thing as quickly as possible, because that web, as you can see, that web is slowing us right the way down, we're less than 500 meters per second at the moment, which is causing heavy damage, which means the shield booster needs to be active as well. We're not capacitor stable, we don't need to be but at this point in time that's not a comfortable place to be so now we've got that down let's keep the shield booster going for the moment to take that up we're going to swap across to the hound um, being the next small ship worry about that one we are out of range there we are lock on get the hound and start taking that one down next I'm going to zoom the camera out as well, just because I'm in Nullsec right now. I've got local open, so I can see the different names, and I'm watching the numbers here to get an approximate idea of who's around. But, at the same token, if someone does warp into where I am, I want to be able to see their ship arrive so I can quickly decide whether or not I stay, engage, or disengage. Ultimately, that is an important tool and well worth remembering. Zoom out when you're in combat so you can see everything on the battlefield. Now, with those two small ships down, I'm going to start going onto the larger ships. At this point in time, I look for anything that is starting to fire missiles. Missiles are always a problem to speed tanks, so I'm going to go for the Kistan Bellicose 2 Covert Ops here, because that thing is launching missiles at me, and thus it's a priority target. As a quick aside though, a lot of you guys have been asking about me doing like the Covert Ops Cruisers um, in videos. I'm not really going to touch on them until those missing modules are in. Until then, just take it from me now, they're not worth building. There is no point going for an Arbitrator Covert Ops over a Vexa Navy issue. There is literally nothing that the Arbitrator does better than the Vexa. Um, same with the Bellicose Covert Ops, there is nothing it does better really um, than something like a Caracal. Anyway, so let's just keep going. Obviously, being a frigate going up against cruisers and battle cruisers, it does take a bit of time to get through them. These are just the bellicose. There it goes down. Things that like the cyclones and the guardians. And later on, there are some even bigger ships like uh, maelstroms. They do take a bit of time to go down. I'm not saying the worm is fast at clearing these, but it can do it. And that does give you access to some pretty cool loot some pretty cool situations and like here it's just fun to be able to do you get a lot of isk for completing these as well i think it's about a million per wave it works out as and considering we're almost afk at this point there we are let's have a little look spin round 
I do like, as I've said it before, I like how the Gist ships look. I'm hoping that we get like Gist and Gisty skins. Um, it was quite nice seeing that the uh, if, if, if you had a look at the skins that you could get for the uh, the Corvette ships, like the Reaper and that, the Impera, which is the, uh, the Amar one, the skin that they had for that actually makes it look like it's a Blood Raider ship, which personally I thought was really awesome. Also, I only discovered recently, it's such an obvious thing, you can observe your drones, so you can actually see what a Mark VII Warrior looks like properly in space, with its guns blazing and shooting at everything, although it does seem to shoot at right angles, which does look a little bit weird, but there we go. Anyway, let's uh, move back to the worm itself. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, because obviously this is going to get fairly dull, me just circling the same ships over and over and over again, and slowly pulling them down. The damage is exceptional, it just so happens that these ships have one heck of a lot of HP. So, I'm going to just basically continue doing this, and we'll pick up the recording um, once it gets a bit more interesting. Okay, and with that wave done, I think it's time to jump back in and continue talking about how we deal with the next wave. It's pretty much going to be the same as the start of the previous wave. We kind of lock onto our targets, have a look at what we've got here. I've locked the wrong things. I need that Thrasher Interdictor to go first. We're then going to focus fire onto that. And ah, asteroid, asteroid, am I going to collide into this and do that slow bump around it? No, this is an invisible one that apparently I can just fly through. Don't try that in real life, folks. Don't try to drive into gi uh, giant rocks. Anyway, so <laughs> next wave is up. We're going to take out that Thrasher Interdictor and, of course, just continue doing what we're doing. Pick a target, take it out, keep orbiting, speed tanking, and using the shield booster whenever we need to. And, oh boy, I'm getting some real bad hitching at the moment. That's terrible lag. My internet is just... oh. Man, I cannot wait for that to finally get sorted. Uh, again, a lot of you folks have been asking about that. Oh, oh, notifications. Yeah, let's cover that up in the video. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a lot of you guys have been asking. We have applied now to get the uh, fiber optic internet, but it takes time. We've got to wait for uh, the city council to okay it and then planning permission and all that to go through. And then they've got to actually dig the road up and connect it to the house. So it's going to be a while. But you can see, same kind of thing as we've just had here now. Ultimately, pick a target, keep orbiting with the afterburner on, and when you need to, just top up with that shield booster. I'm not going to keep going on this one because, quite frankly, it is a very slow anomaly, but we do get there, and there's an awful lot of ISK earned in the process. But let's move on. Tama is one of those systems absolutely notorious for piracy. I both love it and hate it here because it's either going to go very, very well or very, very wrong. Usually a lot of people here in system, 59 people, straight away we've got a target. What have we got? We've got our Condor. Can we do anything comfortably with this guy? We're going to lock on. We're going to hit the orbit. I'm close enough to not need to worry about the micro warp drive. Let's, uh, let's approach and do our thing. Okay, we've locked, we've started hitting. Is this guy going to know what hit him? Are we going to take him out nice and quickly? He has locked onto me. And he's down. That was a nice and quick and easy one. Sorry, kind of feel guilty about that. That was a little bit curb stomping. But there we are. Welcome to Tama. On to the next one, shall we? Move into Gurus to Small Anomaly 5. There we go. Nothing particularly interesting on his ship, though, so I'm not even going to bother looting it for this. Shame he can come back and pick that up. Whew. Goes to small anomaly five. This is where you start to see people using things like cruisers, and cruisers can be interesting, depending on what they've decided to fit. Oh, and another one here. It's a Caracal. Caracal Navy issue. Okay, we dare. Do we dare? Yes, we do, because I'm absolutely crazy. That's just the way things go. Watch as this guy completely obliterates my drones. If he's actually going to be smart and deal with it. Waiting for the second drone to actually behave and showcase some combat there. Okay, we're into positions. We can deactivate the micro warp drive now. Oh, there's that. Uh, there's the warp disruptor. Okay, we're going to stick to an afterburner now, just so we get the speed, but don't worry about the signature radius. Hopefully, hopefully I can just handle the, the damage coming in. 
I am going to change to hostiles and find that drone and put a web on it because drones with up there like that let's get that straight okay that's now screening that drone hopefully that drone will now stay far enough away from me as I continue orbiting no that's taking quite some heavy damage I am going to pull one of my drones back to engage his and oh this is getting risky this is getting risky this is where i start to consider do i want to pull away from here if i can take that drone out i think we should be okay it's getting risky we're coming down towards hull what do you guys think should i stay should i stay or should i go <laughs> as the clash famously asked i'm into hull now but without the drone that should reduce the damage taken is it going to be enough? Can we take out a Caracal Navy issue? Oh, I'm feeling very nervous about this, but we're going to stick at it. We're going to stick at it. I've got both drones, the warp disruptors on him. Oh, oh man, this is getting really tight. I'm really not feeling comfortable about this. He's in his hull as well. My shield is just about boosting up a little bit now. If I try to disengage... No, we're going to try and disengage. Going to try and disengage. Activate that micro warp drive so that we can get out of range. No! There goes the worm. Oh! <laughs> oh! Little bit too slow on the disengage. Got a little bit too greedy there. Excellent, though. Excellent fight there. Oh! <laughs> oh, I nearly took out a Caracal Navy issue. There we go. Well! Thanks for watching, folks. <laughs> well, that is exactly as I said it would be. Tama, it either goes really, really well or really, really badly. And this time around, yep, it went really, really badly. Well, I nearly took out a Caracal Navy issue, just I should have disengaged a little bit earlier. I got a little bit greedy, and that's just cost me 450 million isk worth of uh, worth of ship. But there we go, that's half of the fun of EVE. I'm not bitter about that, and heck, that guy's going to go back and brag to all his mates how he took out Captain Benzie. And yes, he did it on video. I'm even going to make sure I upload it with that in there, because you know what? I get a lot of people say, oh, you don't showcase when you lose ships. You'd be surprised, I don't lose ships all that often, and when I do, it's usually not in any way remotely spectacular or worth showcasing that for me was great fun for him i'm sure that was great fun too so excellent work thank you for blowing me up anyway though that said and done i do hope that does showcase to you guys what the worm is capable of ultimately with slightly better drones i think i would have had him obviously mark 7 drones are all we have at this point in time i probably should have pulled the drones back and changed those then for the minmatar uh, warriors and sent in some explosive damage to cut through that armor tank a little bit faster but there we go you live and learn or in this case you get your ship blown up and you learn before you go back for round two that said, though, we've showcased it in PvE, we've showcased it in PvP. I hope that's given you some inspiration. The, Min uh, the Agurastus Pirate's Worm is an absolutely exceptional faction frigate. It is great fun, very potent, very powerful, well worth getting into. If you I've had a lot of people say, is the Worm worth getting into? The answer is wholeheartedly yes. Excellent faction frigate, great fun to fly. Thank you ever so much for watching, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.